Hey everyone, this is Paul Gale from PaulGaleNetwork.com and thank you for joining me today for Video Game News. It is May 28th, 2021 and these are the top stories of the day. To kick things off, we've got a couple things to check out from Square Enix regarding the Dragon Quest series. The first being a 2D HD remake of Dragon Quest 3. Now, I already watched this trailer, but I thought I would share it with you on Video Game News. This is what the game looked like back in the day. And what you're about to see is the reimagining of it. And I think it looks fantastic. You know, this is that Octopath Traveler engine, HD 2D visuals, that we are also going to see in Project Triangle Strategy, which if you didn't play the demo on Nintendo Switch a month back, I definitely recommend checking the game out when it comes out because there will probably be another demo close to when it's ready for release and I'm sure it's going to be just as fun if not better and even more polished. It's a really solid engine. I love seeing new games use it. I think Dragon Quest 3 is a fantastic engine to bring this game to modern standards but still capture the essence of that 16-bit era. Cool combination of pixels and polygons, you know? Personally, I would love, and many people agree, many people say the same thing. Let's see Chrono Trigger with this engine. Let's see Final Fantasy VI with this engine. Hopefully that happens, but for now, that's Dragon Quest III, and I'm very pleased with that announcement and the look. One more trailer from Square Enix. No gameplay footage on this one, just an announcement and the fact that it looks like this next Dragon Quest game is going to be a little bit on the more dark side, a little more serious in its story, and that's Dragon Quest XII. I'm proud of the Dragon Quest series for becoming more popular worldwide. It's great seeing sales and recognition, critical success. Dragon Quest XI was a very solid game, whether you bought it on PlayStation 4, Xbox One, on Nintendo Switch, if you waited and purchased the S version later on. Dragon Quest XII, The Flames of Fate. So that's the Dragon Quest news that I wanted to share. Really cool. And speaking of another popular franchise in Japan that is making its way westward and becoming more popular worldwide, Monster Hunter. I called it just like I predicted that the 6 million would be coming up soon when Capcom would announce, hey, we reached that. 7 million, just about right on the dot. Eight weeks in, eight and a half weeks in, Capcom announced that Monster Hunter Rise on Nintendo Switch has now shipped over 7 million copies worldwide. This is fantastic news. Congratulations to Capcom. This game is really shaping up to being a big seller for the company. You know, we've got the PC version likely coming out next March or so, which gives the Nintendo Switch a full year of exclusivity. And if a Nintendo Switch Plus, which more on that later today in video game news, if that system actually comes out before then, which it's looking very likely, like I said, more on that later, um, we could be seeing some enhancements for Monster Hunter Rise and other Nintendo Switch games not just ones that come out in the future, but titles that are already available on the base system get improvements, you know, upgraded textures, upgraded frame rate, and increased resolution. We'll see. That's just speculation. But uh, for now, Monster Hunter Rise at 7 million. It's slowly catching up to Monster Hunter World. And this is impressive because this is just on one platform, you know. That game, World, was on PS4, Xbox One, and PC. So that was available on many more systems out there than just Nintendo Switch. But still, uh, this is uh, nothing short of great. I think it definitely stands a chance at being another 10 million seller, and we will probably get an 8 million update sometime this summer. It's going to take a few months, but uh, we will get there. It looks like Capcom is having a fun time updating everybody when they achieve these numbers so probably mid-August I would imagine we're gonna get an 8 million update so congratulations Capcom. Moving on 
yet another popular game series from Japan. This is three in a row, although this one has had more global success earlier than Dragon Quest or Monster Hunter, and that's Final Fantasy. Since the release of its first title in 1987, the Final Fantasy series has become a global phenomenon due to its cutting-edge graphics technology, unique and distinctive world settings, and rich storylines. It has since sold over 161 million copies, including package and downloads. With 87 titles, the series was awarded the most prolific role-playing game series by the Guinness World Records in 2017. Congratulations, Square. Final Fantasy, 161 million. That's quite up there. Um, I've been a Final Fantasy fan for many years. I remember playing the original titles on the NES and over at friends' houses. We would join up together and play on Super Nintendo. Final Fantasy VI was a big favorite of mine. And I also liked Final Fantasy Mystic Quest on the SNES. Of course, going forward, the series only got bigger with 7, 8, 9 on PlayStation and 10 on PS2 with voice acting and really top quality cinematics. Of course, they went online with 11, and then you know the rest is history, 12, 13, 14, and 15 being very big and open world, and 16 looking quite beautiful from the first gameplay trailer that we saw. I'm looking forward to the rest of the series, and congratulations, Square Enix. Here's to more Final Fantasy. All right, moving on. We've got some sales talk. This is courtesy of Matt Piscatella from the NPD Group. Thank you for putting this together on your Twitter. I wanted to break down some of these numbers. I'm not going to read everything. If you want to follow Matt Piscatella on Twitter, you can. You can check him out. But to look at some of this data, in particular, What's probably the most important to you, the viewer, is what were the game sales of April? What was that list, that top 20? I'm going to show you that. I'm going to give you another stat too. The, the Nintendo Switch was the best-selling hardware platform in both units and dollars during the month of April. It is now 29 months running of being the best-selling console in the United States. 29 months! If it achieves this one more time, which it looks very likely to do in the month of May, which we are almost over, then Nintendo Switch will be the number one best-selling system for 30 consecutive months. It's already the number one best-selling system consecutively for amount of months ever. Xbox 360 back in the day achieved 23 months in a row. So Nintendo Switch has already met that and passed that several months over. And um, that's just impressive because we've got PS5 out there. We've got Xbox Series X out there. And neither one has outsold Nintendo Switch yet in the last six months. Then again, there's hardware shortages and stuff like that. But uh, still, Nintendo's Switch is doing really well. And you got to give some credit to PlayStation because PlayStation 5, despite selling less than... Nintendo Switch in these last six months. It is the fastest best-selling system to date launch aligned, meaning the first six months of PlayStation 5 on the market have sold more than the first six months of Wii or of Nintendo Switch on the market, respectively. It's just that now Nintendo Switch is selling even more than PS5 during you know this state of its lifetime. So uh, Will the PS5 continue to break trends and continue to becoming the fastest best-selling system ever? Will it matter because will Nintendo Switch just always be outselling it? Uh, time will tell, but really good to see both systems do well and Xbox Series X do well for that matter. MLB Show 21 was the best-selling game of April. It's also now already the third best-selling game of 2021. That's impressive. New Pokemon Snap was the third best-selling game of April and was Nintendo Switch's best-selling title. The game more than doubled the sales of the original Pokemon Snap back in July of 1999. Mortal Kombat 11 came in at number 9. 
for the month, which is really cool to see because the game was already a couple of years old. And this is the first time that it's actually hopped back into the top 10 since July of 2020. So that's really solid. Way to go, Netherrealm. It's the 13th best-selling game of 2021. Pretty cool. All right. If you want to look at the top 20 games for the month of April, it goes as follows. MLB The Show, Call of Duty Black Ops Cold War, New Pokemon Snap, Outriders, Near Replicant, Mortal Kombat 11, which actually came in at number 6, Monster Hunter Rise, Returnal, It Takes Two, Mario Kart 8, Call of Duty Modern Warfare, Marvel's Spider-Man, Miles Morales, Super Mario 3D World, plus Bowser's Fury, Minecraft, Animal Crossing New Horizons, Super Mario 3D All-Stars, Super Smash Bros. Ultimate, Assassin's Creed Valhalla, Pokemon Sword Shield, and The Legend of Zelda Breath of the Wild, the title that's now officially over four years old, that still managed to find its way into the top 20. It should be noted, physical and full game digital from the Nintendo eShop, PlayStation Steam, and Xbox platforms for publishers in the digital leader panel ranked on dollar sales. When you look at Nintendo games in particular, first party titles, uh, it does not include digital. So this is a pretty solid list overall. You've got Monster Hunter. It dropped from two last month to seven, but still hanging in there in the top 10. Some notable ones like Super Mario 3D All-Stars, it went from nine to 16. Now it's officially no longer available. You know, you're still having some stores out there with copies to sell. So you're still seeing it pop up in April. It will be interesting to see if it still pops up in May, but officially Nintendo's not releasing any new copies as of March 31st. And this is a pretty telling list of the industry doing pretty well overall, pretty healthy, with Nintendo making up a good percentage of this top 20. And like I said, that's not even including digital, which you could say would actually put the Nintendo titles a step or two higher than they are right now. All right, moving on. More sales talk, but this time going over to Japan. We've got our Famitsu sales data. This is for week 21 of 2021, which occupies the time frame of May 17th through May 23rd. Thank you, Chris1964, over at the ResetEra.com forums for putting this together. Let's take a look at the top, shall we? Number one for Nintendo Switch, a new title, Rune Factory 5, with 102,000 copies sold. And number two, another new title for Nintendo Switch, Metopia, with 72,000. Number three is Monster Hunter Rise with 26,000. Number four, Ring Fit Adventure with 18,000. At five is Resident Evil Village with 16,000. At number six, another new title for Nintendo Switch, Angelique Lumina Rise at 12,000. At number seven, Momotaro Dentetsu with 11,000. Number nine, sorry, number eight, Minecraft on Nintendo Switch with 10,000. And number 9 is Super Mario 3D World plus Bowser's Fury with 10,000. And at number 10 is New Pokemon Snap with 9,000. Quite a dominated top 10 by Nintendo. We had a split of 9 to 1. If you actually creep down the list and continue looking into the top 20 and going into the top 30, you're going to see... It goes 24 on Nintendo Switch, 4 on PlayStation 4, and 2 on PlayStation 5. It's at least good to see that PlayStation 5 has a couple of titles that cracked the top 30, Resident Evil Village being one of them. I wonder, what does Capcom feel about its Resident Evil presence in Japan? At least when it comes to worldwide Resident Evil Village has already passed 4 million, which it has done so more quickly than Resident Evil 7 has. So that's good, but in Japan, I'm sure Capcom would be happier if the game was selling better. Um, could we see it get ported to Nintendo Switch? Possibly. Maybe the Nintendo Switch Plus. We'll see. Moving on to the hardware side of things. Nintendo Switch, yet another banger of a week with 99,000 units sold, topping last week's 95,000, 
topping last year's respective 52,000 for that week, brings its total for the year to 2.6 million, far passing last year's 2.2 million up to this point, and its lifetime to date at 19.9 million. Next week, we're going to have 20 million Nintendo Switch systems sold in Japan. That's a huge number. Like I said, it joins a very elite top list of four, maybe five consoles, depending on whose metrics you're going off, going off of, uh, of hitting the 20 million club. So really cool. PlayStation 5 with 16,000, which at least did better than last week's 14. PS4 at 1,200. Xbox Series of brand of systems, 1,100. And the Nintendo 3DS at 376. That's going to do it for hardware talk. And usually, I will finish the day of Famitsu sales, when it's a Famitsu sales day of data. That will be the last topic of my video. But you cannot end it on that. You've got to talk about all of the Nintendo Switch Pro, Nintendo Switch Plus, Nintendo Switch Advance, Nintendo Switch Super, Super Nintendo Switch, Nintendo Switch Super, Nintendo Switch XL, Nintendo Switch 4K, whatever you want to call it, those are all the popular names that are going around. You've got to talk about the rumors. It was announced that Nintendo Switch Plus is close to completion, that it will be entering production very soon, possibly in June, perhaps in July, that it will be coming out sometime this September, possibly October. It will launch alongside a high-profile game, possibly games. It looks like the DLSS technology has been confirmed. It looks like it will indeed have a 7 to 7.2 inch screen. It will use the old Joy-Con, but potentially have new Joy-Con that come out alongside it. It will be approximately the same size of the existing Nintendo Switch, but thanks to a smaller bezel, that will give it the bigger screen without having to make the plastic mold itself bigger. So it should feel similar in your hands. OLED screen seems to be all but confirmed at this point. The dock is said to have three USB 3.0 ports and even an Ethernet port. So you don't have to rely on Wi-Fi for an internet gaming. You could use an Ethernet cord to hook up your Nintendo Switch to your home router. Rumors are also suggesting that it may be a staggered release hitting North America and Japan first with Europe a couple of months later. It looks like it's going to be very limited supply no matter where it comes out in the world, but it looks like it is Nintendo's plan to release it this year, hit all of the markets by the end of the year. We have so many reports from so many outlets, so many insiders, leakers, suggesting the same thing. We have Amazon Mexico putting up a listing and then taking it off, calling it new Nintendo Switch Pro. Now, I don't believe that's what's going to be called, but by putting new Nintendo Switch Pro, you're kind of covering your bases, whether it's called Nintendo Switch Pro or new Nintendo Switch. It goes into the Google algorithm of people typing up a new system and buy, and it goes to your site, although that's been taken off now. We have reports out of Spain, reports out of France, reports out of China from manufacturing lines. Lots of people suggesting the same thing. Some people have said to have held it or have seen it in their hands. Others have said that internally at Nintendo, very few people know of the actual name. Maybe a couple of people in North America's Nintendo headquarters, NOA, but really just a handful of people at Nintendo in Japan. We've heard different names. We've heard Nintendo Switch Plus, Nintendo Switch Pro. Like I said earlier, 
Nintendo Super Switch, Super Nintendo Switch, Nintendo Switch Super, Nintendo Switch Advanced, Nintendo Switch XL, Nintendo Switch 4K. Some of these are fan names. Some of these are names that are being told to us. No, I've heard that it could be this. Uh, the DLSS technology seems to be legit. The OLED screen seems to be real. The fact that it will use a little bit thicker of a dock is being reported by multiple sources. A thicker dock would make up for extra space of the Nintendo Switch Plus having an Ethernet port at the back, three USB 3.0 ports. Looks like the system will have a better stand if we're led to believe the reports that it will be more like a Microsoft Surface type stand, something that's foldable, something that could be triangular, filling up the whole back portion of the system, possibly even detachable. Could even be like the Nintendo Switch Joy-Cons and how they have the optional gliders on them to make the L and R buttons stick out more when you're playing in horizontal Joy-Con mode and that this new kickstand wouldn't be a part of the system. It would be able to be clipped on. So if you wish to play it, you could have that functionality. Still use a micro SD XC card on the back. Good protection. Yeah. A lot of things are going down. You know, we don't have too many days left till E3. We've got 15 days. Now, it is Friday in North America, but it has already hit Saturday in Japan, which means it's very unlikely to have Nintendo announce the Nintendo Switch Plus officially this weekend. It's a North American four-day holiday weekend with Memorial Day coming Monday. So if Nintendo of America, if Nintendo in general is going to announce this prior to E3, I would say to be on the safer side, expect an announcement no sooner than Tuesday, June 1st. That would put it at 11 days ahead of E3. It would give Nintendo enough time to shake up the world, make everybody excited, but then also give third parties enough time so that they could prepare and make sure that their demos of Nintendo Switch games are running on the Nintendo Switch Plus and they could have that little asterisk on the bottom running on Nintendo Switch Plus model or exclusive to Nintendo Switch Plus model possibly. What would Nintendo show off with it though? I don't know if they would show off on June 1st, next Tuesday, hypothetically, this Nintendo Switch Plus, just as a video of the console itself with 3D animation of it being turned around with a little voice over and on-screen text saying, use your old Joy-Cons. Use your new Joy-Cons and show off those coming with a new kickstand. Transfer your old data. Micro SDC XC port here. All old cartridges. Better online functionality with Ethernet port. Old screen, new screen, X amount percent larger. OLED panels, more scratch resistance, better battery life. Coming this blank month for $349.99. Pre-orders coming soon. Like, would they just show that as a trailer? Which would be pretty awesome. Or what I'm thinking, what I'm hoping, they show off the new system with a new game, with The Legend of Zelda Breath of the Wild 2. A small, short but sweet trailer that shows off the new game, shows off the visuals of what to expect from this title, looking the best, which would be on this definitive Nintendo Switch Plus, but also show off some of the hardware functionality of why you want this system, why is it better have a press release, and then stay, say, stay tuned for E3 for more details and a more in-depth look at Breath of the Wild 2, you know? That would just make E3, like, set for me. E3 would be good. We got a brand new Nintendo console. We got a brand new trailer and gameplay footage of Breath of the Wild 2. Holy cow. This is amazing. Of course, 
it could be that we just don't see this until E3. Nintendo drops it at E3 along with the Zelda trailer and all of the other third parties. They will be told ahead of time, yes, you could prepare your trailers. You could prepare those asterisk marks in the bottom saying running on Nintendo Switch Plus. Um, but you don't want any leaks to come out till then. So you could tell them what they need to know. I'm sure some third party companies know, possibly. The rumor suggests that it's mostly down to just a handful of people at Nintendo in Japan though, but hard to say. Couple of curious things though. If it is a staggered release, and let's say our friends in Europe get it two months later, let's say it's September, United States and Japan and other territories start to come out a couple months prior, a couple months um, after, I should say. Would that affect the release of Zelda Breath of the Wild 2, if that's the big game to come out alongside it? No, I don't think so. Like, if this game comes out September 29th, this system comes out September 29th, North America, and not until November 20th in Europe. But Breath of the Wild 2 is a launch game. I think Breath of the Wild 2 comes out September 29th all the way around the world. They're not going to delay that game till November 20th for the European market to launch up alongside of the new system when they get it. I don't think so. Um, because it'll still be completely playable on all Nintendo Switch existing models. You know, regular, new battery one, light. But I definitely see that a lot of people will want to wait and play it on the new system. Unless if other possibility is, let's say it comes out September in North America, in Japan, the system that is, and in Europe gets it in November, but they don't have a big game available. There is no Breath of the Wild available for September release. Breath of the Wild 2 comes out in November when the system is available everywhere. Now in very limited quantities though, so there's going to be a lot of people that want to play Breath of the Wild 2. A lot of those 20 million plus people that bought Breath of the Wild are going to want to buy the sequel. A decent portion of those people are going to want to play it on the best playing Nintendo Switch device, which will be this Plus model, but they won't even get that opportunity because there won't be that many out there. Not until 2022 and so forth. So there's going to be some people disappointed regardless, but hopefully the game runs awesome on base models. I'm really excited though. I want to know what you all think. What are your final thoughts hopes, expectations of the system. Are you planning on getting one? What do you want it to be called? What do you think it's going to be from a cost point of view? One of the reports is suggesting that it's actually Nintendo's plan of phasing out the original Nintendo Switch model. So only for as long as Nintendo needs, they would have the $200 Nintendo Switch they would light, they would have the $300 Nintendo Switch, and they would have this $350 Nintendo Switch Plus, or $400 Nintendo Switch Plus. If this thing comes out for $400, I don't necessarily see Nintendo dropping the price of the base model lower than three. If this thing comes out for $350, though, I could see Nintendo dropping the price of the base Switch down to like $280, make it a bigger gap so that new people that, ah, I really want the Nintendo Switch Plus that can't get it for 350 say, well, at least they dropped the original model. So I feel like, you know, a $70 difference because they dropped it 20 is uh, pretty good. Or maybe they dropped the base model to 250 and then they dropped the light to 180. You need to have some proper balance between the three different models that are out there. Now, production for Nintendo Switch is going to be easier than the production for the Nintendo Switch Plus. But when the Nintendo Switch Plus is able to catch up in production and they don't have to produce as many Nintendo Switch base models anymore, if they can get to the point where they're producing enough stock of Nintendo Switch Plus that you know they're able to pump out 25 to 32 million a year to meet up to, with demand, they will phase out the regular Nintendo Switch it would keep the light. Maybe the light would get an upgrade eventually. 
And perhaps at that point, the Nintendo Switch Plus would drop down to 300 and that would be the new price going forward because a lot of people are very comfortable with that. It's a really good deal for that matter. Even the regular Nintendo Switch, $300 for a very capable home console that's a wonderful machine to take on the go and is really cool to play in tabletop mode as well. Nothing else like it on the market, especially that Nintendo first party exclusive IP. Hmm. A lot to think about. Of course, by the time I put up this video, it is possible that Nintendo will surprise us and wow, there it is, the Nintendo Switch Super. Here we go. I would be very happy to see it announced today or sometime this weekend. If it does, I promise I will make another video and I'll put up my live reaction and give all my thoughts dedicated to it. But I think it's safer to think Tuesday next week as to when Nintendo is going to show it. Then again, they could just wait till E3. But I really don't think it's a rumor anymore that this thing is in existence. It's just a matter of when Nintendo is going to show it. All right. That was exciting talk today. Thank you for watching Video Game News with Paul Gale Network with me. I hope you all have a good one, and I'll see you later. Bye.